All right. Good morning. Good morning. What's up, everybody? I appreciate you guys joining me today. We are going to co be combining and comparing some uh, resumes. And uh, we start off with the Michigan Wolverines. What's going on, everybody? I appreciate you guys being here. So I cooked up three resumes for everybody to look at. And I know there's a lot of college football left to go over. Um, there's a lot of big games to you know still go down. Alabama still has to take care of Chattanooga. Alabama still has to go to Jordan Hare. But the playoff rankings are here. And in fact, the next batch of rankings comes out tonight. And as you know, Alabama sits at the number eight spot. And as you know, with all the allegations and Jim Harbaugh being suspended from Michigan, Michigan is still a top four team. So what we're going to do, I have three uh, resumes that we're going to pair compare against Alabama today. I got Michigan's, I got Texas, and I got Oregon's, okay? We're going to look at those against Alabama, and then I'm going to take your calls. So hang tight inside uh, the call queue, and then I'm going to open up the show uh, and take your calls, and I want some feedback. So I appreciate you guys joining. Hit the thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And the first uh, team that we're going to go over, um, actually, let me tighten up this camera. Just bring it down just a tad. All right, you guys feeling that? All right, so um, let's look at Michigan, okay? So Yesterday, I don't know if you guys saw this, but during Coach Harbaugh's Monday press conference, he said that Michigan was America's team. He said that what Michigan is doing, um, they're defined with the naysayers. He used naysayers. Uh, and he said that America loves a team that is the underdog. And so let's look at Michigan's schedule and uh, kind of their resume and up to this point in time. And I know they still have to play Ohio State. And um, look, it's it's worth looking at all these resumes. And as we go forward through this week, we'll knock out one through uh, eight. We already had Alabama's. And someone asked me in the side of the comment box, they're like, why are you throwing up Alabama's resume? Are you running out of things to talk about? No, like this is the point in time where we all talk about playoff resumes and what's on the line. We know what Alabama has to do, and that's to keep winning, of course, right? But the same token is like, we want to know what other teams stack against Alabama and why these teams should be, um, you know, ranked below Alabama or above Alabama. I mean, there's people literally inside a room tonight that are going to be talking about why Texas and Oregon should be ranked above Alabama still. And it's like, really? Um, nah. So uh, let's go over Michigan's uh, resume and uh, let's walk you through it. So uh, currently, the Wolverines on a 10-game win, win streak, number one scoring defense, um, and I and I really like that stat. I mean, who who doesn't? All right, right. I mean, they're only allowing 7.5 points per game. Um, the number 10 scoring offense overall. When you look to their schedule collectively, it's not the strongest schedule in the world. In fact, um, Power Guru, I think we have it somewhere on here. It's it's number 63 overall. Compare that to Alabama's, who have uh, who has a number two overall strength of schedule right uh you have their key win as penn state that was beating uh, the nittany lions this past saturday and they still have to play ohio state um i think when you look to michigan overall the sign stealing allegations is something that we have to consider and the committee is not going to uh, look at those allegations right now and and have that affect the rankings they said that their job is just to rank michigan as a football team and until there is physical proof they're not going to do anything and i think that's just going to be it i don't think that michigan at all is going to be penalized and in fact i don't think the playoff committee i don't think ncaa um is, is going to move fast enough to have any type of sanctions against michigan before uh, the playoffs i think if anything happens it'll be next season uh the big 10 with the slap on the wrist uh you know banning harbaugh these last three games you saw how the assistant coach was acting uh you saw the the president of michigan saying that everybody is against him look like these are some serious allegations going on but uh you know aside from that here is how the resume stands um they still have to play ohio state the player jj mccarthy has been fantastic this guy has been um really good this year 2100 yards 18 passing touchdowns three interceptions and then blake corum um, I mean, very solid running back. And it's a team built on the run. And as you know, teams that are built on run sometimes have a difficulty playing teams in the SEC, like a Georgia or a Alabama, right? Uh, Blake Corum, 806 yards. I love the photo of him after that last game, right? With, uh, you know, with, with the bandaid over his nose and kind of uh, banged up. And dude is absolutely a warrior. And uh, like you're, you're saying inside the comment box, Howdy May, I mean, Michigan has played absolutely nobody i mean they're they went over penn state um you know number 10 at the time but i mean come on like james franklin hasn't been able to win a big game uh since he's been at penn state and um so that's kind of how things stand for michigan 
what is your take about Michigan being a top four team? Do you think they're a top four team right now? And how do you think that stacks up to Alabama? I'll put Alabama's resume um, up in just a second. Let's talk about uh, two teams that are currently two additional teams that are ranked above Alabama. And let's look at uh, Oregon's uh, resume. Okay. How about this one? And look, I was trying to be as balanced as I could to list out the teams and, and give them, you know, their credit for what they've done. It was a little bit rough with Oregon, Michigan, not so much. I mean, you know, they, they have the number one scoring defense. Um, and, you know, outside of that win of uh, Penn State, you can you can put some things on paper for sure. But with Oregon it was a little bit more challenging. So with Oregon, they're on a four game winning streak. They're nine and one overall, six and one in the Pac-12. They have the number one scoring offense in the entire country, 46.3. Uh, they beat number 18. And, and these rankings, how we did them was where these teams are ranked in these last playoff uh, rankings. So uh, today, Utah is ranked 18, for example, I don't know where, where they're going to move, you know, after their uh, recent loss to Washington, but at that point in time, they're number 18. Um, and then they lost to number five, Washington. Now that game was on the road, just like their win uh, was on the road against Utah. They have the number 18 defense and, and kind of like Michigan, they haven't played an overall tough schedule. As you can see on Power Guru, their strength of schedule is number 52 in the country. Uh, with that said, their scoring defense is number 12 in the country. The thing about uh, Oregon is they're led by a quarterback that Alabama fans are familiar with, and that is Bo Nix who was a minus 150 uh, to win the Heisman Trophy. I mean, the guy is completely balling out. He had six touchdowns recently against Cal. With that said, Jalen Milrow had six touchdowns against Kentucky, right? So um, that's kind of Oregon's resume at a glance. When you look to this resume, what else, what else stands out? What am I missing? If you're an Oregon fan and you're catching this somehow uh, through the algorithm, I mean, what what am I missing here? And how does how does it stack up against Alabama? Like you tell me right now when you look to this resume, honestly, and I get it. Like I think this is the thing I think about with Oregon, and I, and I do like the scoring offense and the the committee love style points. But this is the thing about Oregon is I feel that overall that they haven't played a strong schedule. I don't. I mean, their key win over Utah, and I think they got way too much credit, way too much credit for beating Colorado at that point in time. One million percent. Um, and then, the, you know, the loss against Washington, uh, that was a three-point loss on the road. You know, was, that was a good game. Bo Nix is playing great, but I think Oregon, what happened was they got the limelight because Colorado, the entire world was looking at Colorado. The entire world. Everybody wanted Coach Prime here and there and this and that. And uh, everybody knew outside of Vegas that Oregon was going to destroy Colorado. And then they got so many style points from that victory. I mean, you remember Dan Lanning say that they're playing for clicks, we're playing for wins. I mean, so that's exactly what happened with Oregon. So that's Oregon's resume. Let's take a look at uh, Texas, a team that beat Alabama head-to-head. -head. Um, again, we have Michigan and Oregon. Tomorrow we'll do some more teams as well. Let's look at uh, Texas and uh, what they've done so far. So they are on a four-game win streak, 9-1 and one, uh, overall, 6-1 and one in the Big 12. Um, currently the, the leaders of the Big 12. Number 25 scoring offense, 33.5 points per game. They beat Alabama in that game carried so much weight, so much weight, because that game was in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, way back in week two. It, it's the win that they have been living off of, and that's the win that they will live off of, right? Because um, that win, the committee loves that win. It was a giant win, and it has so much implications to where Alabama is ranked and where Texas is ranked. Um, they lost to number 17, Oklahoma. The concerning thing about that loss to Oklahoma is, um, well, two things. Oklahoma just lost badly to, um, no, that was Oklahoma State. So Oklahoma State beat Oklahoma, and then Oklahoma State just lost to Central Florida. The game against Oklahoma, as you know, was at a neutral site setting. So that was their loss uh, on the season. Now, we know that lately, um, you know, Quinn has been out and they've had a backup quarterback, but the last two games, they've only won by six points. And I wonder if that will come into play when the committee is talking about where to rank Texas, because when you're ranking Texas, do you rank them just off this win against Alabama way back in week two, or do you rank their recent play? Do you rank the, do you rank the fact that um, they haven't been with their quarterback? Um, how do you rank them? I mean, they beat Kansas State. That, that was a game they should have lost a million percent. 
the uh, guy misses a field goal, goes into overtime. They can't go. They go for the touchdown instead of the um, extra point or whatever, and um, or the field goal, and, and they lose that game. Kansas State. They allowed 20 points in, in to uh, TCU, and they uh, are able to win that game as well. Headlined by uh, Jonathan Brooks and, of course, Steve Sarkeesian and all his weapons. So there's kind of the resumes side by side. Let's look at Alabama's one more time uh, before we uh, take the calls. And look, I- I'm telling you, I didn't I didn't try to load up Alabama's resume. I mean, I, I went through these resumes as, to, to try to honestly build them up, to just kind of get maybe some things that I haven't seen, right? And if you're out there, I'd like to get your take on some of these other teams as well. Maybe I missed something. But here's Alabama. Look at this resume right here. This is a really good resume. Really good. And this isn't being Homer-ish. Like, this resume is solid. Eight-game win streak, 7-0 and zero in SEC play. Beat number 10 Ole Miss, number 14 Tennessee, and beat number 19 LSU. Someone in the comment box was like, Alabama's, um, you know, their their defense, they haven't done a good job this year. And I was like, what are you talking about? Right? I mean, look at those, the offense, uh, the minds that they have won against, right? Texas, Sark- uh, Texas and Sarkeesian, Lane Kiffin, Tennessee, Jane Daniels, all these guys. Their defense is, I mean, they, they're battle tested. Uh, their loss was to number seven, uh, Texas. Points per game, 33. Points points allowed per game, 18. Second half. Um, I love that style point right there. 175 to 7, 77. Um, the, the defense is ranked 22nd. Considering who they went against, I think that's pretty impressive. And then the number two, strength of schedule on Power Guru. Milrow's recent play has been amazing. It's been bolstering up in the Heisman rankings. And then just the overall dominant defense, that's something that Alabama has been built off of. So uh, with that said, let's uh, open up the phone lines. Let's take some calls. And uh, I appreciate you guys joining me today. And uh, we start off with uh, a 470. Hey, good morning. You're on the line with Kyle Henderson. Who am I on the line with and where are you calling in from? What's up, Kyle? It's Chance. I ain't talked to you in a while, man. Hey, what's up, man? I appreciate you calling in, man. Um, you know, there's a lot to talk about as we start to peel towards, you know, this middle uh, part of November, man. Welcome to the show. I appreciate you joining. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I wanted to hit you. I tried to hit you up sooner. But uh, you just been bombarded with phone calls because, like, every time I call, it's busy <laughs> every single time. So, well, you, well, you made uh, it, yeah, man. I You're to, in. Uh, start off. I know, right? And the first call, too, so that's awesome. Yeah, lead off. <laughs> uh, I want to start off by saying, because since I ain't talked to you in a while, I told you Bama would beat LSU. I mm-hmm. told you that would. Mm-hmm. I, I get that out the way. Uh, and then... Um, I'm pretty sure that so you said something about Bama's defense or someone had said something about it, but I'm pretty sure in every single game this season, the Bama defense has gotten a turnover, whether it's an interception or a fumble recovery or something. Pretty sure that that's a, a accurate stat. I don't know. So you want to talk about strength of schedule of the people ahead of us? Well, uh, I mean, Michigan playing Penn State, that showed – you know, because they didn't have a single pass attempt in the second half, like not one. Mm-hmm. They ran the ball, you know, mm-hmm. like. So, I mean, you can say that, all right, well, you know, you do what works and that's fine. But I think what it is is that Michigan finally got not the caliber of competition or players that they have on their squad because Penn State doesn't have that. But Penn State's a decent team. And they took Michigan – to the end almost you know Mm -hmm. like i i I thought penn state could could actually win that game uh i'm not sold on oregon i think it's tomorrow alabama plays uh oregon bo nicks would still have ptsd from all the uh things alabama did to him back when he was at auburn so he wouldn't be able to hang uh and yeah i don't understand what that colorado oregon deal is why you know like I, I just don't know. I mean, no, there's no defense in the Pac-12, from what I can tell. It's always a shootout between everybody. Like, nobody has a defense. They want to talk about USC's defense being terrible, but Washington, they got took to the limits. Oregon got took to the limits with everybody. I mean, I guess you could say Oregon's probably got the better defense out of all of them, maybe. Mm. But I, I'm I'm not sold on it. And Texas is hanging on by a thread. I think that you know they're 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 in they're on the verge of getting got. They're not the same team that we saw 
in week two that beat us. Mm-hmm. It's like we're not the same team. Mm-hmm. They're not the same team either. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't – they're just – I mean, Quinn Ewers never looks really completely comfortable to me. He always just looks a little erratic to me. I don't know. Mm-hmm. He just he just seems to. Plus, they got their uh, their star running back out with an ACL injury, so he's mm-hmm. he's gone. So mm-hmm. now they got. So I mean, I don't. Uh, and I think Ohio State. I think Michigan when they play Ohio State, I think this is Ohio State's year. Mm-hmm. Now this is not the same Ohio, Ohio State team that we saw last year with CJ Stroud and Marvin Harrison and all of them. I mean they still got Marvin Harrison, but you know like they're they're not as flamboyant as they was last year. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of undefeated teams, but I just don't want them to kind of you know get in because of that because we saw what happened with TCU getting in just yes. because of whatever you know, and and that was just a uh, uh, a disgrace of mm-hmm. the national championship should never been played that way. That mm-hmm. was just, and I don't want to see that again this year. So, but it's tough because I don't know that Louisville will probably be Florida State's only real competition. Uh, Michigan will or Ohio State will take one of them will take each other out. But then, do you leave a one loss Ohio State team out? I mean. I think that if Alabama beats Georgia in the SEC championship, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna be highly considered, maybe even in. But I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know why they've just let them steal at eight at eight like that when they've had no close call, none. They they whooped up on LSU, they whooped up on Kentucky, uh, they whooped up on Tennessee in the second. I mean, I don't. I don't know why we're so hated on and leaving us at eight. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, I I think that, you know, the committee, it's clear that they really like the Pac-12, just like uh, Jonathan. uh, What's up, Jonathan? I see you inside the comment box. Uh, He's saying that, um, you know, Oregon to uh, Oregon State and Washington, you know, expected to be close in Corvallis. And and that could be a game that everybody's going to be watching um, this Saturday. But it's just like the favorites. Once again, you know, this top one through eight, they're they're all favorites again, which they should be. Um, and I, I think that, you know, the, the Michigan Ohio state game has such huge implications just as the PAC 12 does. So a lot of these games kind of going forward, still, there's a lot on the line. And then plus with that said, I mean, I guess you could label this, you know, more rat poison is the fact that we're talking about this, considering that they still have to beat, um, Chattanooga, Auburn in in Georgia. But I I think to, to argue that is this team, um, is, Washington is the underdog. That's crazy. Um, that this team, I strongly feel, is the hottest team in the country right now. This Alabama team, honestly. I mean, led by Jalen Murrow. Well, they're playing championship. Yeah. They're playing championship caliber football. Man. Yeah. Yep. You know, the defense is humming. You know, like the only the only place I is is Kool Aid's muff punt. But I mean, like uh, he made up for that in the very next punt. You know, like he took it back like 40, 50 yards or something like that. So I mean. You know, other than that, they're playing championship caliber football. Mm-hmm. And I think that that needs to take – somebody needs to take notice in that committee, and I don't know why they're not. I mean, I don't know how anybody can think Oregon is the the best one-loss team right now. I just mm-hmm. don't – I don't I don't see that. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> they have to know that if Alabama – I think if Alabama and Texas or Alabama and Oregon, if they play tomorrow in neutral side – Whatever, I th- I'm taking Alabama. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I mean, that's people have homer, people have been asking me. Say, yeah, they've been asking me like, what, what's your take on this Alabama team? I honestly don't feel Alabama lose another game. Period. Like, no matter what route they go, no matter who they play, like, this team is, they're too hot. And I think that they continue to just get better week by week. Even that last game, I mean, you, you throw in that last touchdown against um, Kentucky, I mean, that it should have been really 49-14. to 14. Against LSU, they snuck in one more touchdown. That game should have been a different score, too. I mean, honestly, Alabama's defense is playing at such a high level. I, I And that's why I continue to argue that Georgia, number one, and, and I have a um, something to correct. So yesterday I said that Brock Bowers uh, waiting to get back. He obviously played against Ole Miss. So thank you for the corrections, everybody inside the comment box. Um, so, I mean, look, Georgia, yeah. uh, until beaten, they're, they're the number one team. They're, they're a complete team. We know that. Um, and, and I think that they have some uh, reverse rap poison being that everybody doesn't think that they're number one. Uh, they're still playing at a high level. Um, Chance, make uh, one more point, man, before we move on. 
why is everybody sold on Ohio State? Mm-hmm. Now, if they still had C.J. Stroud, I could see why, but Kyle McCord ain't doing nothing. I mean, am I missing something? Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. Why are they like? Why is everybody high on Ohio State right now? Um, I I think that. So th- this is the other thing. So like with Ohio State, they have this win over Notre Dame, right? And people at the beginning of the season, kind of like with Colorado, they were just so fixated on Notre Dame kind of being back in the fold again, and which they weren't. And they've lost three games again. So when Ohio State was able to beat uh, Notre Dame, everyone just got complete. They gave them so lot, yeah, they they gave them so much credit for that win. Let's look at uh. Um, Ohio State schedule r- right now. Okay, so this is so to to start the season they beat Indiana, um, Youngstown, <laughs> Western Kentucky, and then this win right here, this seventeen to fourteen win against the three loss Notre Dame team. Now, right, that is the win that everybody was like, "Yep, Notre Dame is, is that team." It was this was actually a good loss for Notre Dame. People love this a hundred percent. They were like, "We love it." This Notre Dame, this Notre Dame team is back, and um, they're not. Of course, they've lost three games. Clemson just beat them. Clemson's not even ranked. Um, so uh, when you look at, uh, them through the mud. Yeah, I know. I mean, and then they beat uh, Maryland, and then they beat uh, Purdue, uh, then they beat uh, Penn State uh, at Wisconsin. Uh, at Rutgers uh, in a game which they were trailing at halftime, and then Michigan State. So like, I kind of, I mean, man, like. Look, they have two. That's that's why I think like Georgia. If they're not number one tonight, I'm gonna be shocked. Yeah, I don't. I just don't see what. I just. I, I'm just not sold on Ohio State. Like Kyle McCord is, you know, he's not a great quarterback. He's not doing nothing. That's just. I mean, Drew Aller had a better game with him against Maryland than Ohio State had against Maryland. Mm-hmm. I think. I mean, yeah. Drew Aller went out there and balled out. Like, I mean, and Kyle McCord ain't done none of that. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, maybe against Western Kentucky he did, but, I mean, that's it. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just not sold on Ohio State. Uh, I don't think – but you know how they are, man. They're not going to let a team that's gone 10-0, and 0, which is hard for any team, regardless of who you're playing. To go completely undefeated is hard for – week in and week out It's hard for any team. I get that. Mm-hmm. But, like – like strength of schedule and um, how you're playing right now should matter, regardless. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just <laughs> they'll oh. they'll eat each other just like in the Pac-12. Yep. They'll, they'll they'll cancel each other out. It's gonna happen. And then uh, uh, it's just up to Alabama to win out. You know, like I think Auburn will be our. Uh, I think Auburn will be a harder test just because it's Auburn and it's a Jordan hair, then it will be for us with Georgia at the SEC championship. <laughs> I feel like it'll be, that'll be harder for us and that'll be a closer game than, um, than the SEC championship game. I mean, yeah, is. I mean, so, th- th- it's going to be difficult no matter how you slice it. Chance, thanks for the call, man. I appreciate you calling in and uh, call again next time, man. I, it was good to catch up. Oh, yeah, absolutely, brother. All right, man. Have a good one. See roll tide. All right, roll tide. All right, we got uh, Demetrius up, and then we got a 3-3-4 uh, uh, coming up next right here on Bama Football on YouTube. I appreciate you guys uh, joining me uh, today on Tuesday, November 14th. Today we're comparing some resumes as we uh, look to the next uh, edition of the college football playoff rankings that will be posted on Tuesday night. So uh, Ohio State, who your schedule's looking at right now, uh, we're kind of running uh, through that with Chance uh, calling on the line and looking at that overall. I just think they got way too much credit for that Notre Dame win and uh, for that Penn State win. But with that said, I mean, look, I, I would say this about Ohio State. I do think that they have um, a good team. And just like you, Ed was saying inside the comment box, I mean, they, they are a team that has uh, weapons. You look at the wide receivers they have. I know the quarterback play isn't what it was, but their defense is pretty good. And um, I, I definitely think that Ohio State is, um, I, I guess I would, who wins it? Who's a better team, Ohio State or Oregon? Who are you taking in that one, right? Call online numbers at the bottom of the screen, Jack. What's up, man? I appreciate you asking. 205-850-1994. Uh, with that said, we got Demetrius. Let's get it. Hey, Demetrius, welcome to the show, man. Thank you very much for calling in. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning, Kyle. What's roll up, buddy? Tide. Yeah, real tight to you, man. Yeah, I wouldn't mind making a correction to that last call. He's talking about we played on the neutral field. I believe at this point in time, 
and we still ain't clicking on all cylinders on on both sides of the ball. No aspect. We can go anywhere, anybody in. We can go to Athens, Georgia. We can go to Eugene, Oregon, Austin, Texas, the Horseshoe mm-hmm. in Columbus, and we can be any team in the country. Mm-hmm. Let, let's get that at the, 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 the way we playing right now. Mm-hmm. That's what I see. And it, it, that's as far as Michigan, Jim Harbaugh. They trying to make they. That's kind of like they trying to politicize it. It's like, it's like a political stunt to me. You talking about this America's team, this us against us. I mean, what's what's next? They're gonna be ten. They're gonna say alternative facts about us uh, cheating, recording people on the sideline. Come on, man! You and that's that's a bunch of baloney. These John Brown schedules, these other teams have, and I mean, it's the same thing every year. The Penn State, the Notre Dame. Oh, they good. They back. They back. And what and what they be mediocre at best. Mm-hmm. Every year, it's the same hogwash coming from the same people, same back times, same back channel. That no, your Notre Dame's, your Penn State's, and the USC. Look, they they irrelevant now. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe I mean, oh Notre Dame, USC got a risk, but we have we have Michigan ever been relevant? That relevant in the, in football? They had some high right teams. Well, when have they ever been a real true powerhouse that they can come on making this much noise? Jim Harbaugh came back in college football that nonsense. When he first came back in, he started throwing shots at who else? None other than Coach Nick Saban. I, 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 I don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, you need to, some of the, uh, the NCAA and the Big Ten need to get them off Michigan off their soapbox to where they. We're America's team. Come on, man. Baloney. But anyway, back to the to Nick Saban and the All Stars. Yeah, I believe going forward, everybody see we just gonna play more and more, get more and more better. I mean, you can we can beat you with the quarterback. We got the potential to beat you with the running backs. We got the potential to beat you with the tight ends now. And we got the potential to beat you with the receivers. I mean, every aspect of the game is getting better for us. Mm. And I, I'm I'm proud of these young men going through our adversity. As far as the college football playoffs, I mean, hey, it is what it is. I mean, we run the tables. Yeah, we get in with some, I reckon, with some help from other teams losing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's gonna shake itself out. But I I can't see a bias towards us if if a scenario where we can't put Alabama in. I mean, that's a bunch of baloney with this Texas team. Well, they were playing good at the first of the year. They've been playing mediocre all year. You come, you mm-hmm. come look at. It. They just, I mean, yeah, they beat us. I ain't gonna capitalize on capitalize on the mistakes we made. They cap, they capitalize on. They beat us, but I don't, I don't see it at this point in the year. And I don't. Uh, folks need to get off their soapbox with this. That they know what team in the whole country that they damn. Uh, the standard is mm. uh, Georgia. They know they know who they always looking in the review. Who who they always looking at? Who 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 live? What other team live rent free in every in every school that is in college football? What what team live rent free in their mind? The University of Alabama. And it is what it is. Yeah, I and think I'm, I think you make a good point because I mean, what what team is everybody still trying to be? Right. What team? Think about this. The Texas A&M, the athletic director, what he what did he say uh, why, you know, Jimbo Fisher was uh, fired other than the fact that, it, you know, wins and losses. He was saying that um, other programs and he listed out kind of the categories. There were all the things that Alabama does. And he said, you know, being relevant and having that type of leadership and being able to develop the talent uh, that you have on your roster. There's one thing there, there's a difference between, um, you know, being able to buy everybody in the transfer portal or recruits or whatever, but you still have to develop those players. What did Coach Saban say yesterday during his press conference? Thought it was fantastic sound, but I uploaded it yesterday. And he said that, look, the fre- he's never once been asked about a freshman and how much they played. I'm sure that, you know, Caleb Downs, that's going to speak for itself. But, you know, you have to develop these players. And Coach Saban, there's there's literally been no other coach in the country that has been able to develop the, the type of players that Coach Saban has. Um, Chris Broswell is a perfect example of that. 
right? He could have left. He could have left behind Will Anderson. He could have left a couple years ago. People were like, where is he? When is this five-star going to play? He didn't say anything. You didn't hear him say anything on social media. Now look at him. That guy has made an amazing amount of money because he's waited his time. And I think when other programs around the SEC, or around the country, they come in and they think that they can just go into the transfer portal or, you know, buy certain players or whatever, it, it you can't develop those type of players. And it's hard to stay within uh, the relevancy, let's say the top eight year in and year out, like Coach Saban has done and um, Kirby Smart is doing it now. Let's see if he can continue it for the next three or four years. Um, I think he will. I think he has, you know, the process in place. I mean, recruit Georgia is a recruiting hotbed. That's why it's so disappointing um, that Jimbo Fisher was never able to get it going. And look, those coaches are well compensated. Uh, they know what's on the line. And um, there's a lot of stress that goes into it. But still, Nick Saban has set, set the standard and set the stage. And um, yeah, that Alabama is still the program that everybody else is trying to be. Um, all right, uh, Demetrius, make uh, one more point before I get to my next caller. Since you since you brought it up, I know it's a little off topic. Even 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 Kirby Smart, he even got the he stole the recruiting board when he left Alabama and took pictures to help his <laughs> recruiting. So hey, 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 it is what it is. I mean, we, we live rent free in everybody here. Everybody is the committee I'm gonna say this and, and land my land my plane, you move on to the the committee is just using they just trying to get the Pac-12 and these other little teams some little some little revenue coming in there because they know they're relevant. And I mean, they, they playing high school football out there on the West Coast. <laughs> Come on, if you want to, I'm like I'm like um um Hector on on on, on Friday. You want to smoke with the big boys, huh, Smokey? You come down here to the SEC. Roll Tide. No. Oh. I mean, even, uh, you know, Brian Kelly, I was listening to him. And um, by the way, I mean, you look at kind of the comments that Brian Kelly had um, accusing of Dallas Turner to that he was trying to knock out Jane Daniels. I thought that was over the line. I mean, here he was a couple nights before, you know, talking to the team and in the locker room. And I like that talk that he was talking to the guys about, you know, fight and this and that. And then he goes out and accuses Dallas Turner. I mean, uh, he's still mad about that particular play. I think he's still mad about the outcome of that game. I think he's mad about the outcome of the season. But one thing that he was saying is, um, you know, the difference from, you know, coming from, uh, you know, Notre Dame to the SEC, it's real. I mean, it's a war. Every single weekend, it's a war. That's why I asked Coach Saban yesterday about the gauntlet of the season and how this team has transformed from, um, you know, that point, you know, in time of week two up until now. And because you look at Alabama's, look, this, this, this should stand out to everybody. Seven and zero in SEC play. The most difficult conference. Georgia should be, we'll build out Georgia's resume as well, right? And, and this as well, that, that power guru strength of schedule, combine that with Milrow's recent play, the second half adjustments, the wins that they've been able to have. I mean, that this, is, this resume right now is better than the other three that we've shown, period. One million percent. All right, Demetrius, I appreciate you calling in, man. I'll catch you with you next time. Roll Tide. Roll Tide to you, man. Thanks for calling in. Demetrius always coming through. We got a 334 and a 205 up next. All right, we got a $10 super chat. I appreciate you. Uh, thanks, PK. Appreciate it. 205. They finally have people on the committee that will screw the SEC. If Georgia isn't number one tonight and Ohio State beats Michigan and Bama beats Georgia, this committee will not jump Bama over these garbage teams. That, that's something that we are talking about um, on another show that I had. And the fact of the matter is, is like when Ohio State and uh, Michigan play, right? The outcome of that game, where are they going to put that team that loses? What if it's a tight game? What if it's like, I don't know, 31 to 28? Are you really going to put Michigan out of the top 10 or, or the top eight? Are you going to do the same to Ohio State? I mean, look at where they that, that loss for Oregon to Washington didn't do anything to Oregon. Didn't move them at all. So uh, that's why I keep on harping the fact that like Alabama has to beat an undefeated Georgia just to have a shot to really get in. So tonight, I think tonight we learned a lot because whose resume, and I know we didn't have, we don't have them on the board today, but whose resume is better, Ohio State's or Georgia's right now? Who has the better wins? Let's, let's talk about the wins, okay? Who's, who has better wins? You guys tell me right now. Okay, Ohio State. Is Notre Dame and Penn State, are those better wins than Georgia's two wins against Ole Miss and Missouri? 
let's let the uh if, if if we have a tie let it be that the team that um hasn't law who, who has the longest winning streak and who won the last two national titles right it's georgia georgia should absolutely be the number one team that's not sec bias i think they're like that's why i think it's so shocking right jonathan is saying it's georgia has the better wins easy yeah that missouri team is really good oh miss team really good oh miss has lost who let me ask you this inside the comment box okay Ole Miss has two losses this season. Two losses, okay? Who are they to? Georgia, Alabama. All right? I mean, those are facts. All right, appreciate the, the super chat. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it, PK. Um, okay, we um, we got a 3-3-4. Three, three, Let's uh, get to it now. Hey, what's up? You're on the line with Kyle Henderson. Who am I on the line with and where are you calling in from? What's going on, Kyle? This is Bunny from Seattle, Washington. Well, residing in Seattle, Washington, but I'm actually from Sam, Alabama. What's good? First what's time up? caller. Yeah, what's up, man? I appreciate you calling in. Thank you very much for calling up uh, <laughs> from uh, the Pacific Northwest uh, by way of uh, Selma. I appreciate you joining the show. Um, first of all, I I mean, I don't know how familiar you are with the area um, out there in Seattle, but I almost oh. went to school in Tacoma. And, um, you know, I went and checked it out and went all around Seattle, such a beautiful area, such a beautiful city. And, um, I mean, who doesn't love all the fish and the, the fish markets out there, you know, Pike's place and all that stuff. So been out there many times. And, and as you know, now we start to, you know, look to, uh, the PAC 12 and kind of all the notoriety that they've had this year and this and that. So with that said, welcome to the show. Um, eager to get your take. Yes, sir. I'm up here with these uh, Northwestern puppies, man, and <laughs> they are extremely, extremely biased. And the Alabama hate is real, Kyle. I mean, I, I, I just don't understand it. Like, the, um, I'm gonna be quick. I'm not gonna try to drag it out long. I understand his business, but yeah, I just the strength of schedule with Alabama. I mean, this is probably the hardest schedule we ever had mm -hmm. in a long time mm -hmm. like really the only reason why georgia got the schedule that they had and i'm pretty sure i heard one of the previous calls that says because georgia just basically copy our blueprint you win a championship mm -hmm. maybe repeat and you get a cupcake schedule at the beginning mm -hmm. and the second half that's when you get your uh, that's when you get your uh, meated potatoes but yeah man i just as far as to answer your questions as far as who has the better resume ohio state between Ohio State and Georgia is easily Georgia, even mm -hmm. though Georgia was cupcake at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I, I just don't understand the committee, and I really hate the committee. I, I, I'm really scared because they pulled this crap last year, letting a TC rewarding, not even punishing TCU for losing the last regular season of their conference championship yeah. game, <laughs> rewarding them for losing. <laughs> Let that sink in, rewarding them for losing. Man. Put them in just for them to draw Michigan old sorry self. I got I know I gotta keep PG. I almost caught myself. And then for and then for them to turn around and get drug in the natty against Georgia. I mean and they also awarded Ohio State for losing too. They last regular season. And I, I'm really thinking that a committee is showing favoritism to the Pac twelve this year because it's their last year of existence, possibly. That's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. And by Notre Dame being affiliated with the Pac-12 for years, especially in college football, that's why I think they put them on the pedestal. So, yeah, and then Ohio State, man, they barely beat Notre Dame. I mean, if Notre Dame could have been paying attention, I don't know, I can't recall if they had a timeout or not, they would have noticed that 10 men was on the field, and who knows, that one player could have made a difference, you know. So, but, yeah, I want to – if I may, I want to throw out two unpopular opinions. It's kind of off topic, but yeah. it's still in college football. You're good, man. Number one, um, I'm not sold on Lane Kiffin taking over for Nick Saban once Nick Saban hang, hang up the gloves. Mm -hmm. Dare I say, unpopular opinion. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be Chiefs, but nobody wants to be the subordinate innings. I think Lane Kiffin make a hell of a offensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. I just don't think he had coaching material, in my opinion. I don't know if it's too far-fetched to say that maybe Dion 
could take over Bama, I mean, that would be awesome later on down the line. And the only reason why I say Dion is not going to take that Texas A&M job, because I think it's something about his kids have to sit out a year if his kids want to transfer unless he leave them behind in Colorado. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's just going to ride out his contract in Colorado. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, and two, with that being said, with the committee and the crowd they pulled last year, Who's to say that we and he, who's to say we need Georgia undefeated? You know, you get what I'm saying because mm-hmm. based on the stuff that they pulled last year, you know, it might not even make a difference. So it's like we just need the main ingredient we really need is for Texas to lose that Big Twelve championship game. That's what we need. Yeah, whether it's Oklahoma State or Oklahoma, we don't necessarily have to beat a the undefeated Georgia team, even though with now with Mississippi out the way, they will go undefeated. Let's just mm-hmm. be, be realistic here. But so yeah, that's that's pretty much all I got to say. Yeah, yeah. Well, I uh, I appreciate you calling in, Sonny. I, I think the thing with Lane Kiffin in Alabama is, um, I mean, look, I think if you polled, uh, I don't know, a hundred Alabama fans, just random draw. I think at least 65% would want Lane Kiffin as the next head football coach at Bama. Um, I think if you talk to, you know, the administration um, and the people who make those type of choices, I think that a, a good majority of like would like Lane Kiffin as well. And I, I think it's because of the fact that, um, you know, he has rebranded himself in a way to keep himself ultra relevant. Um, he is uh, up to date with the world of the offense. I can't, I, I think I would be excited, like, you said you know from the offensive schematics of things i mean he might be the best um him and steve sarkeesian i mean those guys are absolutely up there um lane kiffin necessarily hasn't won a big game um in my opinion with that said i do think that he has outgrown old miss i think he's he's bigger than old miss i think we all know that so you know who knows what what's going to happen I, i know that he'd probably like to be here i know that he and while he does troll, and sometimes it is annoying that he does all that stuff, I think he does have a great appreciation for Coach Saban and how he's able to, um, you know, help him throughout his career and help him be, you know, probably a better person, or whatever. But there's a lot, there's a lot of people that would want Lane back at Bama, hundred percent. So who knows what's going to happen with Kiffin? But I, I think. What I could say is I think he's outgrown Ole Miss and he's done a great job there. Um, the season ha- that he's had there has been, um, you know, really uh, amazing. He's done great things at Ole Miss, but I just think he's outgrown it, man. But, I, but Sonny, I appreciate you calling, man. Thank you very much for joining us. I know you're a first-time caller, man, so hit the number again. Anytime I'm on live uh, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. So anytime you want to call him, man, we appreciate the call. Yes. Oh, yeah. And it's Bunny. I know my country accent is still thick up here. <laughs> All right, Bunny. bunny. Not funny. <laughs> I got you, Bunny. All right, man. But thanks, Kyle. Yeah. I, I definitely call again. Roll time, baby. All right, man. Thanks, Bunny. All right. Check it easy. All right. Bunny uh, calling up from, uh, he's in the Pacific Northwest, but calling in from, um, you know, by way of uh, Selma. Appreciate it. Uh, we have a, um, a 205 and a 404 coming up next right here on uh, Bama Football on YouTube. I appreciate you guys um, calling in this morning and catching up and, you know, talking college football with me as uh, we look to the, the college football playoff rankings, which will drop tonight again. And when we look to this uh, Texas schedule, we'll get to my next callers in just a second. Uh, this Texas resume the one thing that does uh, stand out to me is their strength of schedule. Um, number eight, Bama has a number two. Um, as uh, as you guys know, they're going to be without their running back. Um, they have a good offense led by one of the best in the business, you know, Steve Sarkeesian, four-game winning streak. I just think that, you know, you look to their next couple of games, I think it's going to get dicey for, uh, for Texas. I think I have another graphic that kind of shows um, the overall playoff watch, and let's look at that real quick, kind of one through eight. I like this graphic. I need to update it with um, the updated lines. But let's start from the left. Ohio State, they still have Minnesota and Michigan. Uh, Georgia still has a game against Tennessee and Georgia Tech. Number three, uh, Michigan has Maryland and Ohio State. Florida State takes on North Alabama and uh, Florida on the road at the Swamp. Washington still takes on Oregon State, a game which Oregon State is favored by two. Thanks for uh, the heads up inside the comment box. Oregon takes on Arizona State. Texas takes on Iowa State. And as you can see, Texas has Iowa State and then Texas Tech. Um, I, I'm, shoot, who knows? Maybe they lose that game uh, against, you know, uh, the Red Raiders. I mean, that's always kind of a squirrely game. And then you have uh, Bama who takes on Chattanooga. And then 
um, the difficult game on the road in uh, Jordan Hare Stadium against Auburn. Uh, we'll go back to uh, the phone lines and uh, let's get it uh, started. It's at 205. Hey, thanks for being patient. You're on the line with Kyle Henderson. Who am I on the line with and where are you calling in from? Hey, Kyle. It's Steve from Birmingham. Steve, what's up, man? I appreciate you calling in. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hey, uh, yeah, I just wanted to touch on just a few topics. Um, starting with Michigan, I know your caller a couple calls ago said that Ohio State was probably going to beat Michigan. Um, I think Michigan's actually going to drag Ohio State because Michigan's got a great run game. J.J. McCarthy's been playing very, very solid. And I just think, you know, Michigan's going to take care of business against Ohio State. What else do you like about Michigan? And then, I, and I know because – well, let me ask you about Michigan because yesterday um, it, it was hilarious that Jim Harbaugh came out, you know, after missing the game and he said he was like – you know, he, he has some crazy sound bites and I liked him when he was with the 49ers. Look, I mean, he, he knows the schematics of the game, you know. I mean, he did what he did with, with the 49ers. Now he's at Michigan doing his thing. Um, but he said yesterday that it was – America's team and that everybody kind of likes to root for a team that's kind of the underdog. What, what was kind of your take on that soundbite? I don't know if you heard it or not. No, I didn't listen, I didn't listen <laughs> to that particular soundbite. But, yeah, I mean, I just think that, you know, Michigan's got an excellent run game with Blake for him. The guy is, like you said, an absolute warrior. He's a juggernaut in the backfield. So, And J.J. McCarthy really hasn't been tested as of yet, and I don't think – that he's going to have a letdown against Ohio State, let alone if they get into the playoff the way he did against TCU. This Michigan team, uh, as you said, you know, has, has a power run game. Um, and what, what I think, like, when you look to – those type of teams versus Bama and Georgia, those teams built to stop the run. Like Bama has done an amazing job against teams that can run the ball. Uh, with that said, J.J. McCarthy, he's been a good quarterback this year. Absolutely, definitely, definitely. And then, uh, you know, if, if it's all right, I would like to touch on the Auburn and Georgia game coming up for Alabama, if that's all right. Mm-hmm, yeah. So with the Auburn game, I think it will be a d- difficult game. I think it's going to come down to our secondary really limiting Auburn's passing game. And then also, Auburn's really, their bread and butter has been long teams on the ground. So I think Alabama's going to limit Auburn on the ground and really take away their passing ability. So I think... Alabama's probably going to sound the win, probably 38 to 20, because I can see Auburn taking a few field goals, getting a couple of touchdowns, and Alabama pulls away definitely in the second half. Now, when it comes to Georgia, I think the key to that for an Alabama victory is going to be Alabama's secondary versus Georgia's passing game. Mm. Because Carson Beck has been on a tear. Yes. I think we got uh, disconnected. One second, I'll be right back. Hey, Steve, repeat. Uh, you, were, you were talking about Carson Beck. Continue. We got disconnected. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying that um, Carson Beck's been, you know, he's had a great couple of past few games. And I think, you know, the key for Alabama is can we really not completely take away their passing game, but can we make it difficult for them? Mm-hmm. You know, can we play really good sound defense in the back end? Can the DBs get phased properly? You know, I see a lot with Georgia that their receivers are getting so much separation. So I think Alabama's DBs are really going to be the key to the game. And also Georgia has, they struggled against Mizzou with Cook running the ball. And as we've seen, Jalen Milrow is an absolute beast running the ball. So I think that's going to play in it too. And I really like Alabama's chances against Georgia. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I, I think the the thing, and I've been talking about this uh, on with Steve from Birmingham, talking a little bit about, you know, Alabama versus Auburn and Georgia versus Alabama and kind of some of those matchups going forward. Um, I, the thing with Alabama and Auburn, just no matter how you slice that game, it's going to be, it's going to be um, you know, four quarters. You're going to have to put four quarters to play together, and probably in the second half, Alabama is going to have to, you know, gut out that game just like Georgia did. I mean, that game, Georgia was beating, uh, Auburn was beating Georgia at Jordan Hare Stadium. It's just a tough place to play. It's their Super Bowl. Hugh Absolutely. Freeze has beat Nick Saban before. You can go over all these crazy statistics. It doesn't matter whatever's on the line. Like Auburn, it, I mean, they're playing their best football of the year. It, it seems like this happens all the time with this Auburn Alabama game, right? It's like Auburn, we've completely forgot about them, and then the back end they find themselves right before they play uh, in the iron bowl i think when you look to alabama versus georgia there's a lot of key components that you go against um that you look when you put on the table and like you said i mean carson beck has been amazing and with jo with brock bowers back and all their weapons um i mean they're a balanced team they're no longer this team that just runs the football they're a dangerous team 100 percent. they have a defense that i think um you know is up for the challenge with alabama's offense i think it comes down to you know some big plays from Jalen milrow and if he can be able to um you you know, that, that'll be a great opportunity for Milrow to really silence any of those small remaining critics will be games like that. Uh, games against Auburn on the road, games against Georgia. I mean, they're coming up. And I think that'll also allow for Alabama's playoff resume, you know, at the end of the day to be able to um, even get stronger. So, you know, th that's all rat poison because Chattanooga is up next. If Coach, if Coach Saban heard us talking, Steve, um, we would be uh, in the penalty box, man. Anything else before I move to my next caller? Absolutely, Cal. I appreciate it. All right, man. Take it easy, buddy. All right, Steve uh, Allen, Birmingham. Yeah, that's the rat poison. Alabama, by the way, doesn't play Auburn this week. They play Chattanooga. Um, <laughs> with that said, uh, 404 205. How about, okay, how about this for some rat poison? Um, who plays? <laughs> it's going to piss some people off, okay? Um, but I got to ask it. Uh, who plays after Ty Simpson? Okay, look, Alabama gets up. Let's say it's whatever. I'm talking like major rat poison right now. Okay, so Milrow gets gets things rolling. Alabama's rolling. Ty Simpson does his thing. Who, by the way, he looked pretty good. Ty Simpson looked pretty good against Kentucky. I'm not trying to start no quarterback controversy. I'm just saying, like, he looked good. I, I think you guys would agree, too. Good playmaking ability, and I love the fact that he can run, too. Um, but after Ty Simpson, who goes in? All right. That's kind of some, uh, there, there's some rap poison sound off. Yeah. I'm telling you, he, he did look damn good. Uh, so who plays after, um, <laughs> who plays after, uh, Ty Simpson? I think it's going to be, uh, dot, dot, dot until <laughs> I'm not again. All right. We go back to the phone lines of 404. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, what's up? Thanks for calling in. You're on the line with Kyle Henderson. Who am on line with him? Where are you calling in from? <laughs> Good morning, Kyle. Uh, this is Al. What's so, up? Thanks for taking my call again. What's up, Al? I appreciate uh, you, man. Very <laughs> the very devious laugh you have there, man. <laughs> man, I know that that is going – that people are just, you know, because this quarterback thing is crazy. But I, I'm serious. Like, if we get to that point, every that that's the question that everybody wants to know. But nobody's going to ask it, you know. Like nobody would ever ask it to save it, and neither, nor should you. <laughs> but but honestly, who's the third quarterback on this team? <laughs> you know, if you go by the depth chart that we know of, you know, it's just it's got to be the kid from Notre Dame. Uh -huh. You know, I, I mean, I, I personally, I mean, QB one is the only one that matters right now. Yeah. I love the way Ty <laughs> looked last week, he looked like he's been preparing. Right. That's good. I'm glad he still has his head in the game. That's mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he did, yeah. and he did look good. To be honest, he looked he looked yeah. really good. Yeah, he's been taking reps. You can tell. Hundred um, percent. The game slowed down for him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he was definitely a part of the game plan of what we wanted to execute against their pressures and everything. Um, so hats off to that young man for still buying in. That's great. Um, that that just that just goes to show you how the chemistry is really uh, good on this team this year. So what's on your mind as we go into this uh, Chattanooga game? You want to talk um, some uh, playoff uh, talk. You want to talk Alabama versus Chattanooga, guys who are back. By the way, this could be an interesting note, something for everybody to watch. Um, Devontae Smith was suited up against Kentucky. Now, Devontae Smith 
had a, a foot issue that limited him from probably being the starter. He was going to be the starter over Jalen Key at that other safety spot next to uh, Caleb Downs. Hurt his foot and, um, you know, hadn't seen him up until this Kentucky game. So now with Jalen Key now out with the quad, is this a game where, you know, you start to see a little bit more Devontae Smith? Something to watch out against, um, you know, uh, Chattanooga. You also had uh, Manuel Henderson, saw him on special teams and, I don't know what the case was. Maybe you guys know inside the comment box, but um, Justice Haynes had kind of that big brace on his arm. Didn't really affect him. I mean, he still ran for 30 yards or whatever and saw a little bit of Richard Young. But anyways, Al, what's on your mind, man, as we uh, turn the page to uh, this next game? Yeah, uh, I think you're spot on there. Uh, with uh, the coaches show, uh, had some comments about that, about uh, playing Devontae. He, he has to get some reps mm -hmm. uh, with live game action just to kind of knock the rust off. Uh, with a guy with that kind of speed and talent in the back end, that's why he he edged Key out. I think he has exceptional uh, straight line speed uh, to cover from the safety position. That's I think that's what won him out uh, in familiarization with the system. So I think he has to take some reps. Uh, you can't leave Story out. He's paid his dues. Uh, he's a solid player, uh, but Devontae has to get snaps. Um, I love to see Henderson. Um, I love his straight line speed, but I also like to see him in the um, the the deep overs that we used to run in the corner routes that we've been running against a, a three high look. Uh, I think he'll be really effective in that and explosive once he touches the ball. Uh, just another weapon. You know, I, I, so I think those two guys you name are spot on as far as uh, giving some other teams nightmares <laughs> yeah. of what mm -hmm. we're going to throw at them. But just, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, one thing I wanted to touch on, you put some stats up, Kyle, mm -hmm. with Michigan. Yep, yep. Okay. All right. Now, what stuck out to me was this. Uh, one, Michigan has uh, no receivers to take the top off the defense. They're just not a deep threat team. We, mm -hmm. we haven't seen them go vertical. But if you look at J.J. McCarthy's stat versus that of Milrow's stats, uh, they're actually pretty similar. Mm -hmm. Okay. As far as just the basic stats, the only differentiator to me, I think, uh, Miro off platform, off schedule, he's much better. We've seen that. And that's the wild card with this team that nobody saw coming. We saw it coming, but the teams on the out, they, they were thinking the guy was just, <laughs> he was just a runner. But, mm -hmm. uh, but Michigan, um, I, I think, uh, I, I think they're, they're a good solid team, but I think we take them out, uh, only because of the fact that we can cover their deep threat that they don't have and we're built to stop the run. And then Miro's exceptional play. Uh, I don't think they can contain him. So uh, we're definitely the best team, I think, trending uh, this right now. Uh, every team that wins the national championship, they're playing the best football at the end of the year. Period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so I, I think you, we, we can look at them comparatively speaking, points per game, uh, points allowed. Um, you look at the strength of schedule, there's no comparison there. I, I think that, you know, right now, I think our resume is much better. Right. What about this Texas one? Texas, I, I have a lot of love for Texas because one, you know, I know we're in the Bama Channel and our echo chamber. We're the best team. I really like what they bring to the table up front defensively. That's the only reason they're not they haven't lost dropped another game. I think that that's getting overlooked. I think we play them on a neutral field. We beat them because they caught us when we had no chemistry. We had no identity as a team, mm -hmm. and our psyche was very fragile. Mm -hmm. And we were leading that game 18, you know, going to the fourth quarter mm -hmm. with that type of team. Uh, I, to me, I think that football, just like any sport, you don't play your best football in September. Mm -hmm. You play your best football in January if you're if you're a championship caliber team. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the 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 Bama fatigue with this committee is is, is just uh, pervasive. Uh, so do we play, if we play Texas on a neutral field, taking my Bammer homer hat off, we beat them um, because we're, we're stacked up to play them. And our quarterback, his play has been transcendent versus their quarterback play. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference in that game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I just saw uh, that Quinn Ewers is coming back for the 2024 season. That's kind of news that is just uh, circulated around uh, college football. You're okay. going to start to see more announcements kind of like that going forward about who's coming back, who's um, leaving, this and that. But Quinn is coming back for Texas for that 2024 season. Um, yeah, and, and I think, um, you know, you, you get Texas Bama on a neutral site um, right now. And 
That's, I mean, look, I'm kind of pointing to Texas right now is the way that they've won those last two games. I mean, they found a way to win, yep. but with that said, they've won those games by a combined six points. Um, so, you yep. know, is a team playing, you know, peaking or are they kind of, you know, uh, you know, trending a, an opposite way. I don't, I don't know, but they, they still are finding a way to win. I mean, plain and simple. And uh, you know, I'm kind of curious to see if if they still will be ranked above Alabama. I mean, I I would think they are, but who knows? I mean, it's kind of like how Alabama has played these last two games compared to how Texas has played their last two games. I think there's a big difference. It's a huge difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, if Al Davis was over the committee then uh, there's no way that Bama will win because Al Davis said, hey, just win, baby. In yeah. the NFL, that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In college football, in college football the, the, the calculus is different. Mm-hmm. Okay? And so I say right now, who's trending hot? Yep. I mean, Bama goes right there. They press all the buttons. Yep. Texas is not. Yep. Okay? Uh, uh, to me, Washington is not. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oregon is trending a little bit hot because they play a little bit better defense, you know, up front of the yeah, scrimmage yeah, yeah. than Washington. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and the two big ten teams. And of course Georgia, we can't leave them out. Yeah. Uh, so if I had my top ten would definitely be uh Georgia, uh I would probably say us. I'm being biased, but I would say us in the top four question. So just say two to three. Georgia's number one clearly. Mm-hmm. Two to four, it's gonna be us, I would say Michigan. And um, dare I say, Ohio State. Mm-hmm. I would I would take out all the Pac-10 teams because one, I think, watch Oregon Ohio State's defense cancels out um, Oregon's offense and Washington's offense. Yep, they're gone. Yep. Uh, the only other team that could probably sneak in there is a Texas team because they play better defense than any of the Pac-12 teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you look at the trends over the last 10 years, six years, who's won the national championship? Teams with good offenses, but teams with highly functional defenses win the national championship. Mm-hmm. I, I think that disqualifies every Pac-12 team out there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, uh, I appreciate you calling, man. I got to I gotta run to my next caller, uh, but I appreciate the context, man. Right. Thanks for spitting uh, college football with me, man, and I'll catch you next time. I always appreciate uh, catching up appreciate with you. Appreciate you taking my call. All right, man, take Thanks it easy. Thanks taking my call. All right, man, take it easy. All right, All right my good uh, buddy uh, Al um, calling in and uh, always encouraging me to uh, follow up on Proverbs, which I appreciate. Good looking out. You know, you got to have those mentors in your life, so I appreciate it. Um, we have a uh, Texas, that resume up on the board. And as someone said inside the comment box, you know, Arch Manning, never going to play at Texas. I mean, with Quinn coming back, I mean, clearly, you know, it's going to be hard for Arch to beat him out. I mean, that's kind of the guy, you know, that they want to be the guy. And I know he got injured the year before and then injured this season. And maybe he's waiting on, you know, and you kind of look to all the quarterbacks. Um, I mean, you want to go against them in the NFL draft? I mean, look at all the quarterbacks on the board this year. This year has been an incredible year of uh, quarterbacks. I think there's going to be several that, you know, go in that first round of the NFL draft. Uh, this will be my last uh, call. David, David, I know you're, you're behind once again, man, but uh, call again tomorrow, man. But we have a, a 205 that's been on a little bit longer. Um, 205, let's do it. Hey, thanks for calling in. You're on the line with Kyle Henderson. Who am I on the line with and where are you calling in from? What's up, Cal? Uncle Charles, man. What's happening? What's up, Uncle Charles? It's been a minute, man. Yeah, man. I tried to get on, man. I just couldn't get get through the log jam last <laughs> night. But I'm on now. And that's what's important. Yeah. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me let me break y'all off a little something. Up. See, this is why Nick Saban get paid the mega bucks. This is why Nick Saban got this Alabama team right now on the brink of another national championship. And the way I look at it, I tell you right now, if they don't even get there, he did a masterful job because we didn't look too good about six weeks ago. Mm. Well, we didn't look too good. In fact, it was a horror pitch out there. Let me tell you, if I had a choice to see Alabama and see the exorcist, I'll take my chance with the exorcist. I'll go ahead and see that movie because we looked it so bad. It was real bad. But look at, the, look at what Nick Saban does. This is why you believe in the process. See, a lot of these coaches around by Nick Saban age the game don't pass them by. And you know why? Because Nick Saban does one thing better than any other coach in the country. He had other coaches to do their jobs. Not Jimbo Fisher. Jimbo Fisher is the water boy. He the councilman. He the coach. He everything. And the game don't pass them by. Mm-hmm. You can't be all those things. Nick Saban be on that coach in the defensive back. 
He got other coaches doing their job. This is why he's sitting where he's sitting right now. We believe what we see. We just saw a tragedy turn into a triumph. We watched it. And now Alabama is sitting in the position where they at least got a chance. And this is what you you believe in what you see. Now, Kyle, I'll tell you something. Now, let me tell you something. I believe what I see, and I'm going to tell you something, Kyle, and you ain't going to believe this. I watched the rat drag a pepperoni piece of called the pot a lot into a drain. <laughs> I believe what I saw, but I can imagine the next call, 911. May I help you with your emergency, please? <laughs> Ma'am, I just seen a rat drag a man across the parking lot into the drain. <laughs> you must first dial a one or zero when dial his number. They don't believe you, but I do. Let me tell you something. We're sitting on the verge of greatness. If Nick Saban win a championship or go to the next championship and win it, I would not be surprised. And you hear me very well, Alabama Nation. I would not be surprised that Nick Saban shut it down. And you know what? I would be happy with that. Now he can go spend time with them grandbabies, go on trips with Miss Terry, go around the world and everything, and then he can enjoy his life. He have done more than enough for the for the great state of Alabama and for the Alabama team. So if he leaves tomorrow, I'm happy for him and his family. I'm going to say this in closing, and I'm going to carry this thing on up out of here. Let me tell you something. I used to be humble when I was a child. These children get everything they want. Xbox 360, 25, whatever that thing is. I don't know what it is, but it's something. And we, these children got more than, more than enough. But see, I didn't have it. See, when my mom got me some church shoes, I didn't get them to see it. She took me to the outlet. Man, let me tell you, those shoes were ugly. I'm telling you, they was big in the front and small in the back. But I thought I was going to get out of church without somebody noticing me with the muddy shoes on, and I didn't make it. Because the pastor said, I like your shoes. You would like them. You got the same tie on. And this is what I'm talking about. Children got more than what they should have. They could have lived in our day. They just could have did it. Roll time. We're going to go all the way. Let's focus on Chattanooga. Let's get this job done in Auburn. And we're going to do what we're supposed to do. Remember, you believe in what you see. And that's all I got to say, player. Appreciate you. All right. Thanks, Uncle Charles. Appreciate you, man. All right. That was uh, Uncle Charles calling yes, in. And uh, I think I got him up just a, 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 a tad too early. But, man, what a call. I mean, especially to end the show. I mean, he's a uh, facts. And I love – I think he makes most of that stuff up on the fly, right? I mean, he's just uh, – someone said he's more effective than coffee. One million percent. Uncle Charles, we appreciate you so much. David, uh, I know you're starting a job tomorrow, man. Call in on Thursday. Call in on Friday. We got plenty of uh, room for you, David. Just called up the back end, man. So uh, we appreciate you, uh and uh, your support, as well as everybody else right here on the show. Thank you very much for joining us uh, right here on the YouTube channel. Hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe. Uh, now at 95,000 subscribers, uh, inching closer towards 100,000 subscribers right here on Bama Football on YouTube. I will be live again on uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m. and then the day after, day after, leading you up to Chattanooga. Um, got some uh, player interviews coming your way today. We uh, will have Will Riker at the podium. This will be the first time that we heard from him in a while. Will Riker is a great um, interview. I mean, this is a young man who's been here for um, such a long time. He's a leader uh, scoring in SEC history. Um, I mean, super established, the best all-time kicker ever at Alabama. And I know, um, you know, th this team would be different if it wasn't for Will Riker this season. I think he's going to play a major factor into how Alabama ends the rest of the season. So I appreciate you guys. Um, if you guys can... Um, become fan funders of the YouTube channel. Definitely appreciate it. Hit the join button. It's on the homepage of this YouTube channel as low as $2.99. Just hit the join button. And then if you're on your phone, you can just scroll up. There's a hyperlink. You can hit that to become a fan funder. Thank you very much for everybody's support. I will catch you guys soon right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Coming to you from beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Kyle Henderson.